At RubyConf last year, I got to see Greg Bornstein do a talk on this Ruby Arduino development software, and he showed you know some really cool uh, stuff interfacing software and hardware and doing robotics, and it was you know one of the best talks of the whole conference. And I'm like, God, when I do a conference, I got to have him talk. And uh, luckily, Greg is a cool and generous enough guy that he was willing to come and and uh, make my day. So. Uh, are we all ready? Yes. Are we good to go? So uh, Greg's from Portland. He's a musician and a hardware hacker and a software guy and um, one of the nicest vegetarians I know. <laughs> Thank you. So here we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Bornstein. Um, this talk is about a library I do called Ruby Arduino Development. Um, and um, just to start off, um, you've seen, you know, uh, I know that all of you guys are software engineers, but Probably um, most of you aren't electrical engineers. Um, and so I need to do a, I'm required actually by law to do a condescending safety intro. So we have to start with that. So electrical engineering is for experts, okay? Like look at this guy, this is Lee DeForest. He invented the vacuum tube. He's, he's wearing a bow tie. He's got like diagrams on his whiteboard there. Um, you're not as smart as him. So this stuff is for prof prof professionals only. It can be really dangerous. Like, you see this guy, he's, he's safe for 1,000 volt. And I don't really know how many volt 1,000 volt is, but it seems like it could be dangerous. You should be wearing a hard hat whenever you do anything related to electricity. Um, and so if you ask an electrical engineer, this is how they see you, okay? Your job is just to plug it in, no questions. Um, but so thankfully, there's more, you don't have to just do electrical engineering if you want to hack hardware. You can do physical computing. And so unlike electrical engineering, which is for experts, we're going to do physical computing, which is for everyone. And for example, I've got a few examples here of people who do physical computing. For example, this is two artists in New York, Jennifer and Kevin McCoy. And what they've done here is they've plugged a whole series of lipstick cameras onto this miniature um, thing they've got, which is uh, creating a scene from a Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire movie. So that turntable turns around, and there's all the little figures of Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire dancing. And then they have a microcontroller that edits between the different cameras to create animation. Um, the, another example here is it's for idealists, so Fab Labs in India. Um, this is a guy programming here, a microcontroller, um, to do lots of like service projects. To you can lots of things you can do by sensing water quality or air quality um, or sheep. Um, and another p uh, physical computing is also for hackers. So this is a cockroach-driven robot. So that's a living cockroach on there, and the cockroach and it's a, a robot about yay big. The cockroach is on a uh, ping pong ball, and when it runs, it spins the ball, and the robot senses the spin of the ball and drives the cockroach around, so the, the cockroach can drive the, ro the little robot around. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, physical computing is just programming for stuff. That's all it is. Um, just like in regular programming, we read inputs from, you know, from URLs, from files, from the user. In physical computing, we read inputs from our surroundings and we modify them based on whatever logic we're trying to do. Um, so um, physical computing got a lot easier a few years back when this open source hardware and software project called Arduino came along. And Arduino is Italian for strong friend. And um, a lot of the contributors to the project are Italian, which makes them really nice. Um, so you can you program the Arduino via USB, just on your serial over USB on your Mac laptop that you've already got. You can power it via 9 volt or just via the USB. Um, it's got 14 digital I.O. pins. So that's a pin that can read whether or not there's an electrical signal there, and it can send a logic level signal um, on each pin. Um, there's six analog input and output pins. So that's analogs for things like varying voltage. You can measure distance. You can measure weight. You can measure loudness of things. And then it's got an AVR microcontroller, um, which is the thing you actually program um, that controls all of these, all of the various inputs and outputs here. So um, this is uh, just a quick snapshot of the software library that comes with the Arduino. It's open source hardware designs and open source software. Um, and I don't want, you don't need to worry about the details here, but the point is that most of the API is for sensing and controlling the physical world. Um, so hello world in physical computing is you make an LED blink on and off. That's the universal get started that's like pr printing hello world um, on a big computer. So this is hello world in Arduino's DSL. And it's really pretty good. It's not bad. 
you know, um, they initialize the LED, then they've got a setup method which runs once at the beginning, and then loop which runs over and over. So they configure that um, pin for output, and then they digital write, so send five volts high, turn the pin on, wait 500 milliseconds, write it low, wait again, do it over and over, you get a blinking LED. So this is pretty good, but you know, we're Ruby programmers, and um, when I started this, I wasn't a C++ programmer at all, and so and it, this looks a little ugly in lots of ways. You know, it's got configuration here, and it's got repetition. So you know, you're blinking, but you are saying digital write on and off over and over again. That's a common pattern. <laughs> you're doing this configuration. This is a really simple example, but you can imagine it, when you're more, using more complex devices, it gets complicated really fast. So when I first was doing Arduino stuff, and I was already a Ruby programmer, I the first part of this project was just this written on a piece of notebook paper, you know. This is what Hello World should look like, you know. The, um, the configuration is declarative. It's not that strange method that gets run once, and it's only in one place, and it's object-oriented. You don't say digital write on, digital write off. You tell the LED to blink itself. Um, and so after some work, that is Hello World in RAD, in my Ruby Arduino project. So, so that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you a few examples of what, I, what you can do with it, starting from Hello World and on to some more fun examples. Um, so just one thing, um, I, there were a few um, uh, very impressive uh, live coding demos. Rich did one, some other people have done some. But um, unlike, there, were, there haven't been any live hardware demos. And unlike a live, live coding demo, you're allowed to sit back with your arms folded and kind of nod in appreciation. But in a live hardware demo, you're required when it's over to say, ooh. So even if, you didn't, even if it didn't work at all, like my demos, one of them may well not work. So either, anyway, I'm going to require you to go, ooh. So I just want to practice that once before we start. So ooh. Good. OK. So the first demo here is Hello World, which is just blinking the LED. So um, I'm going to start. So rad works a lot like Rails. There's a rad command. Let's set this up a little better. Um, there's a rad command that's going to generate a project directory for me, um, and I will mo it offers to install the software if I don't already have it, but I'll just move into this directory here, and then it's got you know some places for config files and uh, some other stuff, and then it's just got this um, this sketch here with some instructions that you can ignore, and I'm just going to recreate what we just saw on that um, on that slide right there. Um, so we set it up as LED. And then we, um, we say LED blink 500. And then we run a rake task, which is rake make upload, which is going to compile our, um, it's going to generate C++, which then gets compiled. What did I do? Oh, I, d I didn't plug in my Arduino. That's important. Um, so we've got to plug it in. And then when I do that, it will, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I like the benefit of the doubt like that. So here we go. It's, it's compiling. It's uploading. And then I'm going to invite Melissa, my lovely assistant up here, to show you with the camera that um, you can see there's the LED blinking. And if you lift up the camera a little bit, you can see um, I'm running an Arduino compatible board, which is not their standard board, but you can get them for, for cheap in kits and stuff. So there you go. That's Hello World in about five seconds. Thank you. You, you guys don't even need the next slide here, which is to remind you, but we just did that. So. Um, so that's Hello World. So that's pretty basic. And you can, if you buy an Arduino, which costs about 30 bucks, if you buy them from Make or SparkFun or one of the expensive vendors, um, and they cost, they range down to six bucks for some uh, one of the kits I'll show you in a minute. Um, some of that requires a little bit of soldering, but um, not very advanced stuff. And you can get it together. Um, so and with all the boards come with these onboard LEDs. So you can do Hello World just straight out of the box. So how does that work? Um, the way that works is that we plug the LED into one of the digital output pins and into ground. And that completes a circuit. And when the Arduino turns on and sends 5 volts from that pin, the LED lights up. It's very simple. Um, so I'll show you another demo that uses a slightly more sophisticated circuit to do something a little more interesting. Um, so I'll bring this up. So I've already got the. Um, we're just on this. So I've already got the um, my uh, a clone here, an Arduino clone. Oop, I need to switch so you can see it. I've got an Arduino clone right here, um, just down a little bit over here, right here, which is this this board right here. It's it run. It's the same software and hardware as the Arduino, except for a slightly smaller package. Um, and I've uh, programmed in it in advance with some firmware that I'll tell you about after I show you the demo. But with the demos. That's just it waking up. So what the demo is going to do is um, I'm going to show you in this Git repo I've got here. Um, I will add um, 
uh, the, that rad project you just created, and I'll commit it. And then I, uh, hello world project, I can't type and talk at the same time. Um, and then when I commit it, the, oops, am I in the wrong directory? Yes, I am. So I'll make a little change within the actual directory. Get rid of this line here. And what am I missing? So, uh, sorry, one second here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, did, did I plug in the wrong? It ring. Uh, it's supposed to ring on the commit as a post commit hook. Um, it worked downstairs. In the same <coughs> same it's set up and everything. Actually, believe it or not, my very first demo failure. So. No bell to ring. Hmm. That's. <laughs> um, well, here it, it, I can I can show you. It makes this sound. Uh, can you guys hear that? Uh, I think it's probably just on the. Um, the, um, um, so you have to pretend that happened with the commit. Sorry about that. But uh, come up to me after, and I'll, when I can think, and I'll show you it working. But um, so yeah, we just did. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. That's why I give that um, warning up front. Um, so how does how was that supposed to work? So we start with a Git repo, and um, we um, we've got a post commit hook here, um, and what that does is just um, shell script that runs when you commit. Um, and so that requires this little library that does serial communication um, that just r wraps up um, the sending of a serial message when I call bell.ring. And the firmware that's running on this, dork, this uh, Arduino clone here um, listens for a serial message and then um, rings the bell when the serial message comes in. Um, so, um, you know, we get that message and then we've got a pager motor here that's leaning against the bell that's got power that goes to it and it rings the bell. So. Um, missed the git post commit hook doing it there, but you, you could kind of use your imagination a little bit. Um, so, and this is the this is the firmware that's running on there. All it's doing is got um, you know pin 12 as the motor, and it's um, it's turning the motor off to start off with, um, and turning um, a LED on just as a status indicator. And then if serial available, we we write the motor. I could even make this simpler by saying motor dot blink, like in that earlier example. Um, and that would work just as well. Um, um, and in this example, I, was, I showed you that smaller board. This is a great um, open source board as well called the Dork Board, made by a guy up in Portland. Um, and that's the entry for it. And it's, um, it's six bucks. It's the smallest. I think you could make one of these boards. Um, that y It's about the size of the, the AVR chip. Um, and it's got this great little separate programming header, which is how it gets the price down so low, which is that it does the USB to serial communication on a separate component that you can reuse across boards rather than having that on every board. Um, and so it's a great project, and they'll mail you a kit. And it's got two surface mount components, but other than that, it's incredibly easy to, to put together. Um, and this, this hack was inspired by um, Why the Lucky Stiff tweeting this tweet here, which it says, post commit to Arduino, to string, to mannequin's finger, to harpsichord. It's very motivating. Um, and so um, we saw the post commit hook part, but I'm working on the rest of it. This is actually a tiny mannequin arm turned by a servo there that uh, moves in an arc like this and plays. I'm just working on the, um, I'm going to use an auto harp instead of a um, harpsichord because it's cheaper, but I, don't, I only have a really terrible arps, uh, auto harp right now. Um, and um, it's worth doing cool things in open source software because like why will at reply you on Twitter? So that makes it worth it. And he promised me an omelet. So. I'm going to redeem that one day. Um, now, here's the slightly more complicated demo, um, which is um, uh, going to use um, a, a Ruby library called Arch Archaeopteryx that gels Bokeh to generate some MIDI. 
and then we're going to hear that MIDI come out of both the synthesizer on the computer and then out of an actual snare drum. So, um, uh, I've got here. Um, so this is Reason, which is um, a sequencer which is going to use the, um, I have to this, um, which is going to actually make the sounds for us. It's going to be driven by Archaeopteryx, first of all. Um, and so if I get it started, just eval this, run this Ruby script. Wrong order. Hardware demos have challenges. Um, can work downstairs and then not when you come upstairs to give your talk. Um. Somebody, if anybody knows a lot about MIDI, I would love a like 20 minute um, explanation of how you get MIDI to not act crazy on OS X um, and actually be able to route it where you want it to go. Um, there we go. So um, you hear that? Uh, you hear that? So that's um, probabilistic generated MIDI um, being sent to Reason and then played through just a drum machine in Reason. So there's this drum machine here, and it's triggering. It's, each drum is listening on a different channel um, and playing different samples based on it. And Archaeopteryx is built to be musical, so. Um, Find it so that it's pretty even on the support beats and then a little bit random on the between beats, so it has sounds like variations on a musical pattern. Uh, so now I'm going to turn uh, Archaeopteryx off, and or I'm going to disconnect it from Reason, um, and I'm going to connect it instead um, to this hardware device I've got here, which um, will send the MIDI over the USB. Um, oh, yeah, it woke up already. Okay, so now. Um, Melissa, will you come over here and hit enter when I ask you to? Go for it. Or I guess I can do it. Oh, got to get the right. That's the same MIDI we sent uh, through this hardware device I've got right here. Uh, out to Hardware on this side, which is uh, taking listen, is taking the MIDI and sending it to Arduino that's listening on soft material, and then turning this motor on and off uh, every time it gets a note on. So when you make MIDI or it's a note on any channel, so any drum that's playing that uh, is being transmitted to a hit on the snare drum. With some more complicated hardware, you could actually set a full drum kit to play. You know, play the when you get a certain channel, that that's the bass drum. Certain channel, I have. little bit smarter than maybe you would hope it would be. So, so yeah, so that is um, Archaeopteryx drum there. So um, how does that one work? I talked about it a little bit as I was going through it, but yeah, it starts with Archaeopteryx, which is this great crazy project of Giles's um, that um, that generates the, the MIDI, and you actually can control it. Um, real quick, I'll show you. This file is just describing um, the, um, the pattern. So if you can see for each of these channels of MIDI, the, um, the, it's just from zero to one, you've got a percentage. So he uses like uh, bass and snare pretty consistently to get, a, to get something musical going. And then all the rest of these channels have some randomness to them. Um, and so I'm just on the hardware side, I'm just taking all of that um, coming in. And then we're sending that via USB to that Tascam device that I was showing. Um, and then the Tascam sends through this additional piece of hardware to software serial um, on the Arduino, which then turns the solenoid uh, motor on and off uh, 
really fast, which makes it snap back and forth. And actually, um, like as opposed to the LED, which we saw, which is logic level, five volts, which is what all electronic stuff, the solenoid actually needs more volts than that. Not 1,000 volt, but it needs, um, it needs 27 volts. So we chain a series of 9 volt batteries together, and then we use a transistor to just have the logic level voltage turn that higher amount of voltage on and off, um, which is the same way the bell over here works, except for with a much smaller amount of voltage. So this is the code for it. It's really simple. Um, that MIDI uh, uh, class method there at the top is the... Um, magic unfinished plugin I mentioned on the framework panel yesterday um, that I've hacked in that I have to figure out how to extract. But um, so then we've got the two output pins and then in the loop all we do is pull the MIDI and we've got these two callbacks we define handle um, note on, that's a typo in the slide, and handle note off um, and all we do is tell the drum to blink for a really short period of time so that we can have a high tempo in the music because if the drum, if the solo note was slower we wouldn't be able to keep up with Giles' fast paced um, drum and bass style, um, and so that's that's really all there is to it, you know. And the handling note off and blinking is just to kind of show the example that there's a whole series of callbacks for these different MIDI events, and we don't even need that. Like you guys can't even see the LED blinking back here, so it's like almost it's eight lines of code or whatever it is um, to do that. Um, and so just to sum up a little bit, you know, physical computing is for everyone. So if you've ever had the slightest idea of wanting the code you write to do more than just, you know, move characters around on your screen or on other people's screen on the web, then you really, you really can do it. Like 30 bucks and like an hour and you can, with Ruby code you already know, you can, you can really do it. You can get started. Um, and so thanks a lot. Um, the project's on GitHub, obviously. Um, I just want to very quickly thank um, two people who aren't here, J.D. Barnhart up in Seattle, who um, was the major contributor that I mentioned that wrote a bunch of the more advanced stuff, um, and Brian Riley, who does Wolf Den, which builds the, these really bare bones boards and has supported me with lots of hardware and lots of totally old school C knowledge. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot, um, and you can get the project here, and I can take questions if anybody has any. And you can come find me afterwards, and I'll show you the commit bell actually working. Can you make a really sophisticated setup to win at Rock Band? The question was, can I make a really sophisticated setup to win at Rock Band? And the answer is, I'm working on that, actually. The, um, uh, uh, you, what you want to do is you want to um, have a light sensor um, on the screen that looks at each of the channels coming down and then just detect when each, you know, you do it guitars either than, than bass, then drums. So you'd look red, green, blue on each channel. Just look to see if it flashes, like do edge detection to see it flash light and then use that to trigger, um, to trigger, uh, you know, solenoids to play the, if you look on YouTube, you'll see people doing that, exactly that. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I'm, I'm excited about it. Hmm? Uh, with the, um, you could, you, you wouldn't, you, the question is how would you detect the light? And you'd use, there's something called a photoresistor, which is a tiny electronic component that costs three cents that um, just, it's the, um, changes the resistance through the circuit when, with more or less light falling on it. So that's something that's really easy to detect um, in a circuit with an Arduino. Um, and so four of those would cost you, you know, a dollar. And it would be a really easy way to do it. Any other questions? Over here. Uh, this MIDI library that's kind of has not finished track yet. Um, I'm wondering about the latencies of it. Um, could it be used for more real-time audio generation, or with the Arduino and everything else, is there like a whole bunch of latencies? The question is about the latency um, on the MIDI library, and if you could actually use that like to perform in a band. Like if you made a robot drummer, would he get out of sync with the rest of your band? And the answer is basically the limit is the clock speed on the Arduino, which is plenty fast. Um, like I don't know, I'm not, I don't know that much about the gory details of MIDI, but um, you can keep up with the clock speed on there. Arduino. like the, it, it would, um, MIDI is meant to be a real time protocol, and so the only the only lag is going to be between when the signal comes in on the Arduino and the um, when it run, actually runs that callback. So it's really just a question of looking at how many cycles the Arduino takes, you know what the clock speed is and then how many cycles it takes to do that. And I mean, if you wanted to get really crazy, you could start to make things faster. You could rewrite parts in assembler so that it would take, if you didn't like the assembler, the G, uh, you know, GCC AVR is generating for you, um, AVR GCC, and you could get it faster that way. But I doubt you'd have a problem. Like, I, 
at one point, I, my uh, OSX MIDI incompetence prevented me from trying it live, but I actually had them both going at once, and they sounded completely in sync to me. So. What is the proxy on um, I didn't say it because I'm blanking on it right now. Um, but uh, you can, if you go on the Arduino website, I'm sure I'll tell you immediately. Any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>